Well, let me tell you this. You've got faith. That's right. You have faith. Really, you may say, I've got faith? Yes, you've got amazing faith. You've got incredible faith. I have to applaud you for the wonderful depth of faith that you have. The real question is, what do you have faith in? Because everybody has faith, and we all are believing in something, and we all have these wonderful beliefs in our lives. And some of these beliefs are actually working for us, and some of the beliefs are not working for us. An example may be those who have never experienced abundance in their life. They've never experienced the bounty of blessings. They've never experienced such level of prosperity in their life. Well, because their faith has been in a sense of lack and scarcity. There are those who said, I've never experienced a healing in my life. I've never had a miraculous healing within me because our beliefs and our faith has been in that healing doesn't happen. It doesn't work for me that way. On goes the list that we could give examples, but we all are believing in something, and faith is at work at all times in our life, whether we realize it or not, because what it is made of is these foundational beliefs, these core values that are deep within us, deep within our subconscious. So in order to really experience what you so desire in your life, here's the key. We have to bring our conscious thoughts in alignment with our subconscious thoughts. We have to bring in the surface thought to match it with the deeper thought. Because when there's that conflict going on, and this is the big issue that so many of us face in our spiritual life, is there a conflict between, oh, I'd love this, but I don't believe it's going to happen. Oh, I really w want to experience my prosperity and blessing, but you know, I just don't think there's enough to go around, and I don't think that prosperity is coming to me. So whatever may be that deeper core belief that's holding you back, that's not in alignment with the thoughts that you'd like to embrace, the desire, that challenge is what's creating so much difficulty for people in manifesting and seeing faith work for them. Because we know that faith is the wonderful spiritual law at work within our lives. As you believe, so shall you receive. It's so comforting to know this, that faith is the power at work within our lives. It is a spiritual law, and isn't it wonderful to know that there's promises, there's laws that are sure things, sure things. I can't emphasize it enough because so many people are new to the very thought of seeing God's promises as being sure things, as being like law, you know? It's just like that simple law we illustrate over and over again. When you have blue and you mix it with yellow, you get pink. No, you never get pink, do you? You always get what? Green, all right, you know the law. Blue and yellow will always make green. Has anyone ever experienced any other color? Any other com that combination creating any other end results? No, that's law. Blue and yellow will always do that. And it's a sure thing and it's a comforting thing if you're working with colors or doing watercolor art or uh, you're mixing uh, dyeing fabrics. You know this is a spiritual law in a physical law, and so it is for spiritual law in our life, that what you sow, you reap. As you believe, you will receive. It's guaranteed. It's how this very universe operates within our lives. If we could just embrace that, we would understand the power of allowing faith or spiritual law, beliefs, to work for us, to always work for our highest and best, to work on our behalf, rather than working against us. So we have to ask ourselves constantly, what is your faith in? Or in what are you believing? What are you holding in consciousness and in the subconscious? Is there this wonderful unity between these two? Because here's the challenge. Sometimes uh, that subconscious mind, that deeper mind, is going to resist any kind of change. You know why? Because you've entrenched entrenched thoughts and ideas and beliefs really entrenched think about that word entrenched you know it's deep deep rooted stuff you know oh i've got some wisteria vines in my yard that are entrenched and i think i pull them all out and i think i've gotten them all cleaned out and lo and behold spring comes and there they pop up once again because there's some roots still entrenched and even though I'm trying to pull them out, I'm trying to get them out and trying to clean up my yard, I think I got them all cleaned out. There's still something 
entrenched that keeps popping up. So it is in our life that we may have beliefs that we think, oh, I've gotten rid of that. But then deep down inside, there's something entrenched in the negative. It's, oh, there's a doubt. There's a fear. There's a questioning. You know, what we want to work on is coming to that wonderful, comfortable place that we know, that we have a knowing within us that just brings us such a comfort because we want to operate these spiritual laws and we want to put them to work in such a manner that they're working for us at all times for our highest and best. This is how we are designed to operate and to live in this world. We've been created for this wonderful dynamic experience called abundant life. That's right. All to experience abundant life. And it's available to us when we are willing and open and ready to allow these spiritual laws to work on our behalf. So when we realize that this subconscious is not always ready for change within our life, what we want to do is really look deep inside and find a way to bring these two aspects together. Surface mind and deeper mind. Conscious mind and subconscious mind. How do we create a marriage? How do we create a sense of unity between these two things? How do we get so that we really are as so in line that the thought we're thinking goes along and it matches the deeper belief that we hold to be true? And how about the deeper belief also inspiring the day-to-day -day thought? That it's, there's a match. There's a sense of coming together, a unity for us within it. A true marriage. We might need to do a little marriage counseling and sit down. Hey, thoughts and deeper mind, let's come together. We've got to think this thing through in a sense of coming into harmony and unity so that the highest and best unfolds for us. When we want to bring about a change in our lives, we have to embrace this powerful component. Here's something you really need. I want you to really grasp this, a component that's really going to help you bring everything into alignment, okay? It's the component of expectancy. Having expectancy within your life is igniting your faith to a whole new level. Because when you're expecting, what are you doing? You're anticipating results. You're actually anticipating that something's going to actually happen in your life. And you are aware when you're expecting and when you're anticipating, you're fully aware that, you know, okay, that job I'm claiming, it's there for me. That partner I'm looking for, it's there for me. That loving relationship I so desire, it's there for me. That success and prosperity, it's there for me. I'm aware. I'm expecting. I'm anticipating. And I'm fully aware that I now begin to take action. I'm taking action. And I'm preparing for it. You see, that's the beauty of that what changes everything. Helping to bring things into alignment is thoughts and beliefs now are coming to a marriage through the power of expectancy. It's something that we embrace so wholeheartedly here at City of Light. We are living in expectancy. We keep saying that over and over again. That's how we operate. We're living in this great awareness. We're living in this great belief. We're willing, willing in this late great anticipation anticipation of God's infinite blessings. And what are we receiving? God's infinite blessings. Wow. Surpassing goals in Miracle Sunday, a generous gift of $900 from the affiliated New Thought Network, and so much more. We had some wonderful contributions come in for Crossroads Community Center. We're blessed on so many levels. You know, when it goes on and on and on, we just have to pause and say, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, universe. Just truly grateful because everything is coming into alignment for us in this deeper way when we embrace this. You know, there were those in the Bible who lived in expectancy. They had gathered around the pool of Bethesda, around this pool of this uh, outside the temples of Jerusalem. Uh, they gathered those who were sick and lame, and they were waiting for the waters to be stirred, and the belief was, Anytime the waters were troubled, the first one in the water, first one in the pool, would be healed. And there were traditions of healings of people experiencing something dynamic. Was it the water? Was there something special about that water? You know what it was that created the healing? It was their faith 
and their belief that really brought about the miracle in them. They, it manifested for them because they believed that there were healing waters, and because they believed so much that they took action, that they stepped forward, they were anticipating it, that they, the energy of belief just transformed their life. And their believing ignited. So much so that the subconscious came in alignment with the conscious, the conscious mind came in line with the subconscious, and those who were there at the pool at that time would find a healing experience in their life. Now, just as people were expectancy, filled expectancy, and had faith in believing in that moment, sometimes in life we have faith in the negative that we've been dumped on, you know, some negative energy dumped on us, you know, and we create some beliefs as a result. Beliefs like you're not good enough. You know, one of the things that really echoes over and over again in traditional Christianity is you're a sinner. Shame on you. You're a sinner. You're bad. You're faulty. There's a problem with you. You know, there's, you're always falling short. You're, you're never achieving the goal. And too many churches emphasize that over and over again, that all we are is sinners. And so we live from that consciousness. You know what? I'm always missing the mark. I'm always sinning. I'm always failing. Because we buy into that belief that that's who we are. I want to tell you this. Jesus is not calling you sinners. His teaching is calling you are the light. You are the light of the world, the light of wisdom and understanding. You are the light of revelation. You are the light that reveals God. There is good in you. There's amazing power in you. But see, here's the problem. We've held on to a negative belief. And those negative beliefs then have gotten ingrained in us so much that we keep repeating over and over and over these negative thoughts within us. And we are releasing the old is what we need to do and filling this vessel of life, filling it so full with the new, with powerful thoughts. So full, you know, have you ever like put a cup under the faucet? Maybe it's got some uh, dirt in it or whatever, but the faucet is running so hard and fast, it truly rinses out the cup. It forces out all the dirty water. It forces everything out because the flow of water is so strong and consistent that it washes the, the cup out almost completely by forcing out all the dirty water, right? You may have experienced that. That's the journey in our life as we're called to repeat, repeat, repeat over and over again the affirming power, the affirming goodness, the very promises of God, the very laws of God at work within our lives, the very promises that are unfolding God's goodness in our life. And we repeat them over and over again, so much that they come on like a divine flow that washes out and rinses out all that negative stuff. You know, we've got to tell ourselves, you are amazing. You're powerful. You're the divine revelation. You're the light of the world. So that it rinses out these very thoughts that somehow we're failures and we're not good enough and we're sinners and we're uh, always... Uh, operating from some sort of shame and guilt within our lives. So the question is, what are you repeating? What are you repeating? What's going over and over in your thoughts? Are you repeating the goodness of God? Are you repeating God's blessings? Are you speaking them over and over again? Are you constantly affirming within your life? Because what's going to happen is that faith is now going to start moving in the right direction. For you. It's going to be beautiful. We opened up the service today with that thought, that affirming phrase, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I love that. What if we accepted that as our daily mantra? This day, this moment, right here, right now, I'm going to start rejoicing. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to tell my mind so much that it becomes a subconscious uh, understanding that I live when I wake up, I start rejoicing. You, tr you condition the body to go, hallelujah, I'm awake and I'm excited rather than, oh my Lord, what time is it? You know, the clock's going off and the alarm and, oh, I don't know if I really, well, let's roll back and go back to sleep, you know. How about we wake up with a spirit of rejoicing and we wake up embracing that this day I am glad in the midst, in the midst of it, I am finding gladness and things to rejoice in. How does that work for us? Because we say, well, you know, there's some days when we're facing a lot of pressure. There's some days when we're facing 
a lot of challenges, some days when we're facing a lot of loss, how can we rejoice and be glad in it? Ah, here's how. Because we know that the day has been created for us. This moment is created for us. And it's created by us. As we understand that our thoughts are shaping the, uh, the molding, our reality in each and every day. But it's been created for a purpose, for a higher good. And the intention of this day being created, of this moment for us, is for us to experience our highest and best. So no matter what you're going through, because everything that you go through is for a reason and a season. So begin to look for the reason with gladness and joy. And look for the season to pass or renew or to change. But we know that there is an intention for the day. It's been created for our highest and best. And then it offers for the soul the opportunity to evolve and grow. So no matter what the day holds for you, it's offering opportunities to grow. Opportunities to uh, just move forward in such power and shaping the soul and evolving because that's what you came to experience, an evolution of your spiritual life. You know, my partner of 21 years passed away, and people said, how can you wake up and rejoice and be glad? How can you do that? You've experienced a great loss in your life, a great moment of sorrow and sadness, and yet how can you wake up and think that there's something to rejoice about? There's nothing to rejoice in that. And you should be in tears and sadness and sorrow. And sometimes so many people are saying, you're just a little too happy and a little too excited and a little too joyful about life after all that you've gone through. You need, we need to see some more tears coming out of you. We need more sadness. We need some more despair. We need some more woundedness. We need all these kind of things because we think that's how we should live our life. And I want to tell you this. Every day I wake up, I rejoice and I'm glad in it. Because I know my beloved is in eternity, and he is rejoicing. And he is experiencing perfect peace. And he is uh, immensely uh, healed from the cancer of his life. And experiencing amazing things. And I know that the day was created for me then to embrace this kind of appreciation for how the universe has unfolded in his life, in this transition from this life into the next and I think about the joy he's experiencing. And every day, I am glad. I am happy for him. And I'm also happy knowing that every day has been intended for me, for my soul to evolve. And I say thank you, universe, for this evolutionary experience. Because I'm going through something that is causing me to grow and stretch and deal with and evolve in ways that I always want to embrace joy in. And I'm learning how to do that. Every day I accept my goodness and the goodness of God unfolding in the day and I rejoice in it, knowing that just as he heaven is opened up beautifully for my beloved Robert, heaven is opening up here on earth beautifully for me. And the same opportunities are available for me. And I rejoice and I find joy in it because our work is to find the joy Find the joy in each and everything, in the midst of everything we're going through. Find the reason for the season. Find the joy in the experience of what you're going through. Because when you do, you'll find that it's so rewarding and you become filled with a gratitude for everything that is happening in your life. To help us on this path of rejoicing, one thing's going to we need. And we need some knowledge. That's right. It'll help us immensely. So many people are going through their spiritual journey on this earth and they're in traditions that say, don't ask questions, don't ask. Just listen to what the pastor says and believe what the pastor says or the spiritual leader or whoever it may be. And they're in these kind of traditions that you can't ask questions. And they go through life and they're saying, you know, I have so many doubts and things I wonder about and the dots don't connect for me and I'm struggling and I, I find that so many uh, things that I'd like to believe, I just question because I'm not allowed to ask these questions. I'm not allowed to seek wisdom. Because knowledge helps us to shift to this understanding.
that we are the children of God, a God who is willing to meet our need every, need, every moment and to fill, fulfill our desires because that is the God who is love, what is love that is simply love. And when we understand that, when we have that knowledge, it begins to help us to find the joy that we may rejoice in each and every day and that may, we may truly be glad in it. Proverbs 4, verse 7 says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. The beginning is, just get it. Start getting it, and that's the very beginning. That's where it all starts. Oh, though it cost all you have, get understanding. The call for us from the book of wisdom of Proverbs and what it offers for us is the most important thing you could do is to seek wisdom, understanding, because when you understand and you walk in righteousness, right thinking, when you embrace this truth, you, you are liberated, you are set free. What do we know? Truth will set us free. We know that, and it becomes a little cliched phrase, but let me tell you, oh, how beautiful it is to understand the truth of God, it liberates you. It will set you free from those fears and worries and stresses and all of that which may hold you back from being able to rejoice and be glad in this day, in this moment, no matter what you're facing. There's something powerful and dynamic awaiting for you. This is the truth. In every moment, if we would just open ourselves up to it, so we find that there can be a transition, a change in our life. And people think, oh, you know, change is like moving the Titanic. You know, mm, we've got to slowly try to move that big ship uh, in the waters and how slow change may be within our lives. Can I tell you this? Scripture tells us change can happen like that. It's described as in the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, when we're open, when we're ready, when we're willing, uh, there can be a change from our doubt to our joy, from our fear to our success. But there can be a change from, in the power of our believing from what we held on and has held us back to what we embrace now that liberates and sets us free. It can happen just like that. In fact, we find that the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 15, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not sleep, be in doubt, be in wondering, slumbering, not aware, not consciously aware, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And it can be that fast for us. When we're willing and open, we can have a complete shift from doubt to full acceptance, from lack to belief in abundance, from the sense of being focused on sadness and sorrow to embracing joy that's unfolding for you in each and every moment. The fundamentalist churches constantly are speaking of Jesus coming one day in the clouds, referred to as a rapture. Rapture is not a word in the Bible, but a concept that they try to ca uh, share with us, that one day Jesus would come for a select few, and if you're not part of the select few, you'll be left behind to be tortured and struggle through tribulation. And on goes, I grew up in that tradition. It was a very fear-based message that was constantly being offered. Be careful, be careful. Jesus is coming any moment. You'll be left behind. Now, I love this thought. Jesus is coming in any moment. And I want to tell you that Jesus is here now. What I'm referring to is this Christ consciousness. The very understanding. The very ability to have the mind of Christ in you. It's here. It's right now. It's in a twinkling of an eye offering you this opportunity to change from being walking in fear and doubt to now walking in joy and anticipation and expectancy and hope and faith and all the dynamic elements that you need to be a great manifester of the miraculous within your life. Our thinking can change and set us free from this bondage, and we then can be open to receive immense blessings. Immense? Immense blessing. How many of you would say, well, I've received some blessing, kind of a tiny little thing. You know, I, I found $10, you know, or I, I found a penny. Uh, I was blessed. Let me tell you this. How, how much of God's goodness would you like to receive if we're asking that question? How much would you like to receive? It all depends upon 
how much uh, of a container you have brought to the river of life, shall we say. Because you can receive as much as you are willing to receive. This is faith. Faith can believe for the miraculous, and it does not know the size of the miracle. You know, because we like to categorize miracles. Oh, that was a tiny miracle. That was a simple miracle. That was an easy miracle. Oh, but that would be a difficult miracle. You know, and so we think that somehow the power of faith is limited in accordance with the size of the challenge. Yet in God, all things are possible, and God doesn't know the difference. So if you've been praying for a parking spot and suddenly you find one, go, it's a miracle. I could manifest a parking spot. Isn't this wonderful? Well, could you manifest abundance or healing? You can. Because if you can believe for one thing, you can believe for another. But it all depends upon the size of your container. The size of the container that you bring to the river of life, shall we say. For as your faith increases, so does the size of this blessing container. And your understanding, your awakening, your consciousness, the study and the seeking of wisdom is only going to help you enlarge your container. And you're going to be, uh, have this huge, dynamic blessing container that says, I'm going into prayer and I'm speaking a word of faith and I'm scooping up abundance. And because I'm taking it all, there's nothing small for me. I'm going big or going home. And that's what we're called to live. And it's available for each and every one of us. But we have to enlarge our container. We have to make it bigger. We have to study to show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, says the scriptures. Study, know, seek wisdom, understand it, and begin to understand these principles that would shake up and shift all the unaligned thoughts that aren't coming together between conscious or surface mind and deeper mind, subconscious. That wisdom and knowledge will bring things into alignment. What we understand is that there are blessings immense. Do you believe that? And have we not just seen them today and spoke about them? A Miracle Sunday offering surpassing our goals, $3,500. A gift from Anton, unexpected income. We didn't even plan for this. A $900 gift came in. How wonderful. I want to tell you this that the blessings that we receive here at City of Light as a body, as a church, are also available for you. They're available just the same. Our problem is we hear of these blessings, but we don't accept them personally. Personally. We think, well, that's for the church. Oh, there's blessings for the pastor because, well, he's a pastor and God has to bless him. Uh, you know, we think of those kind of things, you know, uh, we think, oh, there's blessings for of the church because, well, you know, uh, it's a sacred space and that's what, you know, it's the house of God and that's why the church gets blessed. But for me personally, we would say, hmm, not so much because we don't accept the same power. If it happens for one, it happens for another. Do you realize that? If it happens for City of Light, it happens for you. If it happens for me, it happens for you. If it happens for you, it happens for me. Because whatever happens for one can also happen for another. And that's why we read Bible stories. We read Bible stories not because we want to know the history of Jesus' life. We don't want to read Bible stories because we want to know the foundation of the early church. We don't read them for that purpose. We read these stories because if the miracle happened for Moses crossing the Red Sea, it happens for me. If the miracle happens of feeding the 5,000 with Jesus, it happens for me. If the miracle of walking on water happens for one, it happens for me. If the miracle happens of uh, Daniel in the lion's den, it happens for me. If the miracle happens for you are birthing a Christ as Mary, it happens for you and me. You see, whatever happened for one happens for another. And when we read this story, it's a revelation of what could be happening for you right now. This is the day. This is the moment. As we rejoice and we're glad in it, that miracle of abundance is there. Let's enlarge our container and scoop up all the abundance we can. And let's take it personally. Not just something that we read about in a Bible story that happened a long time ago that doesn't relate to us at all. Oh, it does. It's telling you 
when you face your giant, you're a David. And you can slay that giant, whatever that problem may be. And you, when you're facing the lions that you feel like you're about to be devoured, you're that Daniel. And you can do the same and face those, the roar of the lions. When you are the children of Israel, that's right, and you're facing a Red Sea moment, and you feel like Pharaoh's behind you, ready to capture you and take you back into bondage, and all that's ahead is the waters, and you don't know how to swim. What do you do? You read that story and say, if it can happen for them, it'll happen for me, and you step in the waters, and you find them parting just like that. Because that's how we live on a day-to-day -day basis. These men and women are women of faith who were open and willing and ready to change, and they believed. And the same can happen for you each and every day of your life. I want to tell you this. You already have faith. You already have faith. So don't say, Pastor, help me have more faith. You already have it. The, the big question is that we have to ask ourselves, in what do I have faith? Is my faith in greater doubt and fear? Is my faith in scarcity and limitation? Is my faith in the, it's not possible? Is my faith in the sense that it won't happen for me, I'm not worthy of it, and I can't accept this blessing personally? You see, when we ask ourselves what our faith is in, we find the answer where we can shift that faith into the miraculous working, for it is a promise, a law, that wants to work on your behalf. You have faith. You have amazing faith. Let's put it to work. Amen.